Thank you for that um, opening blessing, Father. It's good to uh, experience community, and being part of the St. Mary's community is a, a wonderful experience for new families coming into our community, and you do such a wonderful job at welcoming people, so thank you for doing all of that. Hannah, what a wonderful tribute. Um, very nicely said and spot on, no doubt about it. Uh, and, and I'm really honored, Juan, to be here tonight, to have the opportunity to kind of say a few words. Um, Juan is, I, I think, a very special kind of leader, and Hannah hit on a lot of the important qualities that makes Juan such a terrific leader. Uh, I read a New York Times article recently that hit on a couple of other points that I think I wanted to make about his leadership. And uh, in the article, it was a, an article written by a journalist that's interviewed thousands of CEOs of corporations that have been successful, CEOs that are successful, trying to tease out, you know, what are the characteristics of a successful leader, a truly successful leader? And basically, he said, there's so many variables, it was hard to tease out any one, two, three, four, five characteristics. There was really only one that kind of came through consistently all the time. And, and I think it describes one in many ways. And that is this, always do the right thing. If your employees and the people you serve trust that you're always going to do the right thing, they will support you, they will work hard for you, and they will see you as a leader that they can follow. And you have that passion for doing the right thing. Also, there was a CEO that was, uh, interviewed that uh, came up with an idea that I hadn't thought about before, but a as I uh, listened to it, I thought, wow, that's a cool idea. And that is, Juan plays in the traffic. And that's what the CEO said. I play in the traffic, and that's why I'm so successful. And what he meant by that was, I go everywhere, I meet everybody, I show up. The world is governed by those who show up. We're here tonight because Juan plays in the traffic and has met all of us and continues to meet people every day, day in and day out. So those qualities are important leadership qualities. But uh, what your favorite, who is your favorite author and what is your favorite book are, are things that help us to describe what our values are and who we are in many ways. And we are in this temple of knowledge here today, this wonderful library, which uh, as a town meeting member, I supported strongly, and Pam and I both contributed to the capital campaign, because I believe strongly that libraries are the cornerstone of democracy, the cornerstones of democracy, okay? It's in libraries that we get people who are educated, informed, uh, and Justice Souter said it very well, in a uh, YouTube uh, presentation he did not too long ago in which he said, democracy depends on an informed, educated electorate. If you go to Venezuela and other third world countries, countries where democracy is not practiced, you're gonna find very few, if any, libraries. And libraries are the center of democracy in many ways in a country, something to uh, be aware of. Public education is also uh, something uh, that is very important in that process of educating the next generation, to participate in the process. And you hit on that very eloquently about engaging local people, solving local problems, which is such an important part of what uh, you've been trying to do. Town meeting, of course, and being a town meeting member, town meeting is probably the most democratic institution uh, in America. And it's such a wonderful thing. And it, and it isn't everywhere that you find town meetings. But it is a, a wonderful experience to find local people coming together, trying to solve local problems. But they have to be informed. They have to know what the issues are. They have to know what's going on. Uh, that's a long way to say that in talking with one, his favorite author is Marshall McClellan. McClellan? Am I saying it correctly? McClellan? I've never heard of him. I never heard of him before. My wife, however, did. When I mentioned it, she did know. Here are some of the titles of his books. 
His seminal work was called Understanding Media, The Extension of Man. It was published in 1966, and so when you hear some of the things, he was a very visionary guy. Uh, the second book is Law, Laws of Media, The New Science, and the last book was The Global Village, Transformations in World Life and Media in the 21st Century. That first book, by the way, was published in 20 different languages, so it was a very uh, important uh, work. And he, uh, you know, he was a visionary, and he uh, pushed a couple of ideas that I think Juan is really pushing here in Shrewsbury with the Shrewsbury Post. One is to explore rather than to explain. And two, you hit on it in your remarks, one, a little bit, to provoke reflection without taking sides. To provoke reflection without taking sides. Uh, we have a hard time, as we all know, being able to have a respectful conversation with two different sides of an issue. Uh, and yet it's such an important part of the underpinnings of a good uh, democracy. Now, Marshall applied these ideas, and then he applied them using technology and the power of instant news, which is a very, very powerful thing. And we've all learned that it can be a very negative thing. It can be something that is troublesome and problematic for us, but it can also be a very, very wonderful thing. I don't know about all of you, but I experience new hope in our country, in our democracy, with those kids in Florida. Bright, articulate, able to formulate a solution to a clear problem. It made me feel uplifted to know the next generation is so talented and capable of solving the problems. It's easy to see Juan's incredible technological skills, this machine in front of me, I don't even know what it is, but <laughs> it's just absolutely wonderful how he's able to do that. Juan's dream of creating a local neighborhood, you know, neighbor to neighbor news service that applies Marshall's principles of explore rather than explain, provoke reflection rather than take sides, indeed educate and empowerment uh, is a very powerful thing, and it's a wonderful life's work. You know, Teddy Roosevelt said that uh, about work, the best prize life offers is the chance to work hard at work worth doing, and you are doing work worth doing for the communities that you serve, Dorchester here on the West Coast and in Venezuela. The Shoes to Be Post offers opportunities for civic engagement for everyone. As a town meeting member, we are kept informed about important issues of what's going on in town. Uh, the Post empowers us with information we need to make the informed decisions about the schools, about public safety, about town services, about all of the issues that people in the town care about. Your uh, stories help us to get connected to the real feelings of people in our community and how we might work together to make this a much better uh, community. And, of course, they do wonderful individual profiles. They did a wonderful individual profile of Hannah Kane. Please look it up. I learned a few things reading the profile, Hannah. Uh, it outlines Hannah's values, and I think it outlines Hannah's many accomplishments worth reading. They also did one of you, Mike. Uh, I know you've uh, seen it. You look very good in it, and the, uh, the article was extremely well written. So again, another way of bringing people to people, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So in summary, Juan and the Shrewsbury Post demonstrates a positive use of technology, a balanced uh, approach to reporting, passion for building a brighter future for Sh Shrewsbury, and we should all support the Shrewsbury Post to continue to help connect all of us so that we can work together as a community to solve the problems in our community and become the best community. And, and if you read the most recent post, you'd know we're one of the safest communities in Massachusetts, which is a wonderful thing, which I wouldn't have known if I hadn't read it, read it in the post. Now, I, I also have a favorite author, and I brought a little gift for one. My favorite author is uh, John Steinbeck. His book that most people know is Grapes of Wrath. But the book I brought for him is In Dubious Battle. 
because it, the Shrewsbury Post empowers us to make decisions. Uh, empowerment, power, the word power, the root uh, ideology of power is to act, to do, okay? Uh, at town meeting, that's what we do. You give us the information, but we act. We have to make decisions about the budget, about whether we're gonna fund the library or not. That's to act. In dubious battle, uh, Steinbeck challenged uh, the West Coast in a major way in challenging the Growers Association and how the migrant workers were being treated. It really was about uh, how do we act for social justice, okay? And that's really what it was all about. How do we act for social justice? I was talking to Father Mike earlier, that Father Juan this morning, in talking about the story of Lazarus, you know, he took a totally different take on it, which I absolutely loved. He said, you know, we don't know anything about that rich guy. He said, well, wh why did that rich guy end up down there, you know? And we'd start thinking about why he didn't do anything that we know of. He failed to act. He failed to act. The guy was right there, hungry and starving. Okay, we have to act when we see injustice. And John Steinbeck advocates acting when we see injustice. My present to you, Juan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.